Welcome back, everyone. I'm Makush Lopinda. Police releasing more detailed figures of how crime shaped up over the past 12 months in the country. All that revealed in a 16-page report released during the police commissioner's annual Meet the Press this morning. JCN's Jamila Misik has the story. I'm happy to report that the preliminary figures indicate an 8% decrease in crimes across the entire Bahamas when compared to 2017. According to Police Commissioner Anthony Ferguson, in New Providence, that decrease was 6%. In the Family Islands, 30%. Crime in Grand Bahama unchanged at 2%. Will add to the overall decline? A reported decrease in the murder count. Figures show this crime dropped by 25% from 122 in 2017 to 91 in 2018, the first time the count has been less than 100 in nearly a decade. When we analyze murder trends on a quarterly basis, we notice some promising results. During the first quarter of 2018, there were 26 murders, representing a decrease of 35%. The second quarter, there were 28 murders, representing a decrease of 15%. The third quarter, there were 16 murders, representing a decrease of 48%. However, in the fourth quarter, there were 21 murders that showed an increase of 17%. Now, it's important to note that, as typically the case, the majority of murders occurred here in New Providence. I wish to bring to your attention that the solvency rate for murders was in 2018 was 73.63% compared to 57.38% for 2017, 53.15% for 2016, and 46.5% for 2015, a notable increase. Now figures further show that there were 19 cases of attempted murder last year compared to the 13 the year before. 2018 recorded no cases of manslaughter, 55 reported cases of rape up from the 52 over the 2017 period, and unchanged 11 reported cases of attempted rape, 113 cases of unlawful sexual intercourse, 474 cases of armed robbery, and that's a reduction of 18% over what occurred in 2017. 108 cases of robbery and 13 cases of attempted robbery. Reporting for JCN News, I'm Jamila Mizek. Now, stats for so-called cold cases were not included in the report, and this may be due to the fact that they are always open, according to the commissioner. While indeed encouraged by the noted reductions in crime, the commissioner stresses that this did not happen by mere coincidence, but as a result of analyzing trends, refocusing policing operations, and developing valuable intelligence. In other news, the government's adamant about changing the terms of agreement for the Oban Energies deal, that is, those that would leave the country at a disadvantage. As Minister Dion Folks disclosed to reporters this morning, there was a meeting scheduled on Monday, but that's been put off to possible dates this month. The minister is now anticipating that it will take about three meetings to have the controversial deal ironed out. I do not want to prejudge how the talks are going to go. Uh, we want to make um, quite ex um, extensive changes to the heads of agreement. Um, if the principles of a ban and the board of a ban agree to those changes, we will sign a new heads of agreement. We, we're looking primarily at three major categories. The economic um, 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 provisions, the environmental provisions, and the legal provisions. Um, I do not want to get into the details until we have an opportunity to present our terms to Oban um, so that they can have an opportunity to respond. Now there is the question of why the government is even pursuing this deal considering its seemingly keen interest in renewable energy. We realize that the whole future um, for the generation of energy is a green-based um, template. We, we are aware of that, but we know that that's going to take time to move from a fuel-based um, um, supply of energy, basically fossil fuel, to, to a green-based um, renewable energy. Um, you're looking at 15, 10, maybe 15 years before that is completed. In the meanwhile, we have to supply energy to, to our consumers. 
There is a possibility that these talks won't be successful. That's an issue Minister Folks shied away from commenting on, save to say it would be up to the government to decide its next move. Should that be the case, the Oban deal is certainly no stranger to grabbing headlines. Think back several months, and many of you may recall the firestorm of controversy it created, leading to the Prime Minister eventually admitting in the House of Assembly that there were serious missteps bringing the government to where it is today. It's trying to still clinch her deal with the multi-billion dollar oil refinery and storage facility for East End Grand Bahama. When we return, a call for investment in security. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.